Hello everyone, and this is General Rage Quit. And today we have a compilation video of all the fights that I did on the four big tanks that I talked about recently. And uh, this is just for the people who want to see like all of them in one video instead of having to look at like four different videos instead. So uh, this is without the intros and the outros, but with, we're still with the commentary. Uh, so it doesn't become a really boring long if you want to like continue watching it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, for those people who want to see it, this long video is not for everyone. I, I know that, but this is just for people who want to see everything in one go. So without further ado, here you go. So here we are in the gameplay. Well, the reason why I make another set of Vengeance Demon Hunter clips is because they removed um, the talent that Sheer makes you um, dash as I said in the intro. So I was like, hmm, I want to see how Vengeance Demon Hunter plays now and if it is a bit more well balanced than it was before. And I have to say that it now feels a little more balanced. You can see it's like it's a lot, I'm a lot easier to kite because now the only thing that makes you leap is the fell blade move, and if you and that is on a 15 sec, 15 I think se something second cooldown, so you can't really reliably use it to dash to people. So you need to be more aggressive with the infernal leaps. But overall, you can't like free dash to people anymore. And I have to say that's a really good change, as you can see in this match. And so here I die after I get burst into oblivion, it's like, well, I know that I would get burst into oblivion, but that leaves the rogue open to finish it and hopefully he finishes it. I think he will, I, I'm quite sure. So, uh, yeah, as you can see in this clip, it's like, because you can't really catch on to people that quick, that quickly anymore because of that sheer change, they, they, are fe they feel more comfortable kiting you and... and like damaging you than before because before they just were just constantly running away and now they don't do that anymore now they just like guide you into oblivion so for balance sake it's a really good change because it means that 
Vengeance Demon Hunter is not such an oppressive tank, oppressive tank anymore because it, now it's just really hard to kill and it does a shitload of damage. But it's not like a tank that oh I'm ranged. Well I can't really use my ranged advantage because I just get like continuously charged upon, so I can't run like I run away, get charged upon. So the, the Vengeance Demon is constantly in melee range. When I guess you could, you could see her, guys it into oblivion, then they just heal, heal re properly and then, yeah, it's not that much for me to do anymore, apart from die, sadly. But yeah, it's like, a, I, f I feel that the, the, that little change from like bringing away Shia, I think they nerf damage in some points as well, I think that's a really good change because now it just f doesn't feel oppressive anymore, now it just feels super strong, like, over not overpowered but, but too strong. And that's a good that's a good change. It's like funny how such a little change can make such a real difference. Here, uh, I think this in one of my videos at the exact same spot in the exact same uh, arena. I had the exact same problem here with this, with this, uh, with the lock as well. It's like they just keep draining life, and, I, and you can't out damage it. It's really weird. It's like I know that Vengeance Demon has a shitload of damage, but together with the absorbs that he's doing and the drain life, I just can't can't kill him anymore. Even if I manage to interrupt it, it's like nope. Just include this one because it looked funny. It's like this because I remember that I had a clip in another video where I had the exact same problem.
I need to get close. And if you want to play against like a Vengeance Demon Hunter in Arena, it's like, as you can see here, blow up the person he's playing with and then just out sustain him essentially. Well, then you could just nu nuke him down together. I'd say that Beast Mastery Hunters do a shit ton of damage and that uh, Havoc Demon Hunters, provided they are in a demonic form, are like almost impossible to kill. But the moment they go out, they, they essentially become kind of squish squishy as fuck and then they just instantly die. So here I'm playing against an assassin, uh, assassin enhancement uh, shaman, and what I know is that he will burst really hard to start. So that's where I pop all my coolness at the start, because the moment I saw it in sense, I knew that he was just going to go full out. And if you manage to catch that initial burst, then then the, then it's like no problem to win the fight. It's like and uh, because they tried to burst me down, because I was so aggressive on the shaman, like my mage had free reign to DPS, so. Fairly simple win, but uh, only because I've played with an enhancement sh shaman like 50 times, so I know when their damage is coming and when it's not there. So now the most frustrating part of this video comes and it's the last gameplay clip as well. Me trying to cut, to run after because you don't this is where that sheer like you miss that talent so much. 
that you dash when you use share. It's like you miss it so much because now you have to like walk into range. You can't just like simply spam to get back into range. And you miss it. Is it a, is it a bad thing that it's gone? No, absolutely not. Because now it makes now it requires you to play better with the Vengeance Demon. It's not like ah ha, 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 click 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 win. It's like you now you actually have to like leap properly and such. And that's why I struggle sometimes a little bit because yeah, it's like I play 50 games at the same time, so I need to. It's like if I would properly play WoW, it would probably be better and it would be as cringy to watch. But um, yeah, it's a good thing. It's like I, I feel like Vengeance Demon is like you still. I feel a lot less more oppressive and I also feel like people can actually kill me now instead of like previously when the other make the other videos I felt like people could never kill me so uh, overall after this gameplay it's like a little double leap in the f wrong direction but whatever after this gameplay it's like I have to say it's a really good really good change and the uh, Vengeance Demon feels a lot more balanced now Still a bit on the strong side, but um, at least not as super oppressive anymore as it used to be. So here we go into the first arena. Where we play against a Frosted Knight and a Monk. So I want to go for the Dead Knight because I know that the Monk can like, self-heal and touch of karma. You know how that goes. So that's why I go for the Dead Knight for him here. Yeah. For the Deadlight first, and here you can see I'm almost dead, but here I use my, like, I've been playing Blood Deadlight for so long that I just automatically start pressing the cooldowns and then heal myself back up all the way. And here the problem is that they they kite me, and then because of that Monk disable, it's like I cannot get in range of the Dead Knight. But the Dead Knight dies anyway to the Monk, because the Monk actually still has the mobility, whereas I don't have the mobility anymore. And here, this is the moment where I really feel that the blood, uh, the the heart strikes cost health, because this is where I actually actually start just start killing myself on that person when I start to dash. Because I still I still want the damage like the old way that night worked that you spent heart strike, but it actually kills me. So I was like, f f I first ever played one game. I was like, okay, I guess something like that uh, was happening, but I was just trying to make sure so I play another arena game. And after this one, I could just notice, like, first of all, the kiting tanks, way to go. It's like, tanks have no mobility, so it's really easy to kite it. But I noticed that I was just essentially killing myself and, like, putting myself at a disadvantage because of um, having the hard strike uh, talented. So here, I think I swapped it out in this one. Just go on that night again. As for with the first arena. And here I'm actually amazed that they might have self healing that the that, that the normal dead knight does now. It's like it almost rifles a blood dead knight self healing. Which is quite crazy. As you can see it's like the massive chunks of hell that come back every time they use a death strike. And I was like, well, I should have gone for the rope, but it was already too late, so yeah. And this is exactly what I mean with like, if you, that's the problem now, because you're not that over, you don't do that much damage anymore, they would just kill your DPS and then kill you. Ah, so here's actually the arena where I switched it out. So the first three I played with killing myself, that's probably why I lost against the, 
the Frost Dead Knight and the Rogue Zombie because I was constantly killing myself. And here we play against one of those monks again because you've seen that one in my video, my Venge Demon Hunter video as well, one of those uh, monks that just keeps running away from me. So enjoy watching me run after the monk again. So here we play against two Feral Druids. And we will see exactly again what it, what it means now that the Dead Knight is essentially your damage has been nerfed because you can't take that talent anymore without killing yourself. So perhaps in 3 vs 3 when you have a healer you can get away with it. But then again why would you pick it? It's like you can get away with it, but it doesn't isn't really optimal because the moment they see you drop low because you're spamming DPS, they will kill you. So here I chain them together for that for that damage. And I'm telling you now, if the, if you could still run the old talent, I would have we would have killed uh, one of the druids here. That druid would have been dead probably. It's like if I could still use it. It's like, a, it's like if you look at how they focus the damage, you could have used it, but in the long run it's not worth having that talent. But just the overall nerf and damage and then just this guy thing. It's like the overall nerf and damage, you have been, and like they have like nerfed like the scalings as well. Um, th this overall like nerfs on the Blood Dead Knight means that it's a lot more balanced, but you're essentially again to the old point of being Blood Dead Knight in Arena that... It's like you will win some games, but you will lose the most because they will just focus your DPS down and then kill you.
So here I just show this one to see that like you can still be useful as a blood damage because you actually see their healer which made the, made that healer pop a shitload of cooldowns to save the the priest but it didn't work in the end because the arm monk is doing way too much damage and there's this weird graphical glitch which looks really funny but it's kind of annoying I feel like monk like for me personally one of the strongest DPS's now is missed uh, windwalker monk so like every windwalker monk I see is like annoying as fuck and does a shitload of damage so if you're looking for like a good DPS, then Windwalker Monk is probably the way to go. And exactly here, you c you probably can imagine my frustration. If I was able to run the old like the old uh, damage increasing uh, talent, I would have killed that hunter there, and then I would have easily mopped up this last hunter. Well, easily, I would have mopped up the last hunter eventually after being kind into oblivion. But uh, yeah, that dam it's like just the overall damage of blood titan has been reduced so much now that it's back to the point where it is in life where you don't really want to run them, it's better to run a DPS because this is just not worth it. And here we have one of the rare cases where people actually focus the blood that night, and this is where you shine. Because your DPS is damaging them as well, which means that they have to pop defensive so they can't properly nuke you. And then it's really, then blood that night shines, but let's be honest, it's like if you play against people who know what they're doing, then they won't, they would, do, they would just ignore you and blow up the DPS. But yeah, I just want to show you where, like, this is like the, prime, like an ultimate situation for a blood that night where you can... Nice misplace with the energy magic zone, by the way. But where blood that night works out really, really well. Just you seeing them whilst they're being nuked by your uh, teammate. So here we go into the gameplay. And it's a 3 versus 3. That actually doesn't go that well. It's like I go for the enhancement shaman first. Because I know that enhancement shamans do insane burst. But um, yeah, it's not really going to help. It's like I just try my best to peel it a bit, but... They do magic damage so that um, physical shield that I'm going to cast soon on the priest is not going to work. And they just properly nuke down the like down the healer. Yeah, here I felt a bit... Uh, I was just testing out the class because this is the first time I played it after the last time you saw me play it. And I was like, oh shit, it felt a bit weak. But... Um, it, it turned out, as you can see here, there's a battle, like I actually managed to follow up the DPS. And my judgment of light keeps my uh, DPS alive a little bit. As you can see there, he the gets healed. But uh, yeah, we lose this one, and I was like, oh shit, are we going the same way as the blood in that, 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 uh, in that sense that um, prop balance is completely shite? But it's quite the contrary, because if you look at the two versus two, you will see the difference.
Yeah, I'm just making sure that uh, they don't get a free shot at my uh, DPS. And actually, you can see here that the Divine Steed was really handy to get back into range. But this hunter, like BM, Beast Mastery Hunter, is so strong at the moment in terms of, in terms of damage output. So he actually managed to like almost practically one versus one them. Because I'm just being there annoying. But you can see there that like you have more mobility to handle like people running away from you. So here's a good example of what I talked about before. If you were a blood dead knight or avenge demon hunter, the only thing you could do is like chase down one of the people and like try to help your teammate in that way by damaging and like maybe a little stun or grab. What I can actually do now as a protection paladin is when I see them being nuking him, he actually try to use the king the king's thing, but it doesn't work. As you could see there, you just try to preemptively activate it, and yeah, notice that he's. And yeah, this is what I mean. Now you can just bubble him. I mean, in that bubble, they, they instantly disengage from him and they just start running away while also being low HP. But it's like that gives you so much more dynam dynamic responses to what to do. It's like with that, you can maybe grip and stun. But if they properly counter that, then you're still fucked. But with the protection paladin, you can just bubble someone and then they're just gonna be safe and survive. And they can't do what they did to my dead knight, which was that they killed the DPS and then killed me afterwards. So that's why Protection Pattern feels a lot better than Blood Dead Knight and Vengeance Demon Hunter for that matter. So as you can see here, you can see that I used the Divine Kings. It used it on myself and it only stayed active for a little bit. And if it didn't, then the Shaman would have stayed alive long enough to kill the rogue and then kill the dead knight afterwards. And yeah, I just got kited and killed. But uh, as you can see there, like the time was broken. If it actually was working there, I would have saved the Shaman and we would have won the game. But you can see there that, the, that like a protection paladin brings so much more utility. And I accidentally uh, pressed the wrong spell instead of my... Only pressing my uh, freedom, I also pressed my shield which is a bit dumb but it was lost anyway. Yeah, I actually don't bubble the rope because he never put into my line of sight and then got killed the, over there. But here, you can see again, Guardian of the Ancient Kings, it doesn't even activate. And if it activated, I would have been able to kill the Shaman because I couldn't take damage anymore. And uh, maybe could have killed, probably not, but killed the, uh, try and kill the Hunter. So, too bad it's broken because else it would have been super useful. So I can see that they're focusing the rogue. So what I want to do is heal now. I fuck up. And here I try to use the guardian talent again. And yes, you can see, it casts it on myself and, and instantly cancels it. It's like, why doesn't it, it doesn't work properly. And like, if, if it worked properly, you could play, you could play so dynamically with people. It's like, you could like, if you are like pre it's like, okay, just keep going. I'm going to shield you and you're going to be immune for damage. And they can just keep on going without having to pop their own defenses. But, um... Yeah, sadly it's broken because you can see the potential of how good it can be in those like two, in that one loss before and now I'm just, it's like, essentially be a bit like, hello by rogue, you can die on your own there, heal myself a little bit and then just fight off the warrior, just, which was a lot tighter than I thought it would be, but uh, yeah, you can see the potential of that uh, spell, but it doesn't work at the moment, so I'm probably going to have to make another video when it actually works.
So now I've just switched away from the talent, and here I've just, I just, I bubbled the mage, but the mage popped uh, their own uh, cooldown as well, which was a bit unfortunate, but that's what you get when you have no communication. I was like, I'm just gonna pop bubble so the mage doesn't die from the hunter, but uh, they popped their own ice block. Which, it doesn't really matter, but you can see, like, the idea is, like, if you were playing together, then they... Like with some pre-made, then they could have like left the bubble, the, sh the bubble, the ice block out, and then just um, taking your shield first, and then afterwards, if needed, use ice block. And I accidentally, accidentally pop ardent sensor, ardent defender, so I thought they were going to shoot a little bit at me, and I was hoping that I could kill them in that way, but uh, too bad. And here I thought I pressed F2 and shielded the the mage, but I didn't press F2. I just <laughs> shielded. I just shielded myself instead. That was a bit unfortunate. And here I've switched away. I tried to heal the the mage a little bit. And this is what I mean. You have so much more utility as a protection paladin. So that's why protection paladin actually didn't feel that bad. It's like obviously I felt the damage nerf. They probably have implemented some along the way, but you still feel. Like viable, you still feel it's like I wouldn't like with that night. I would like not recommend playing Blood Planet anymore with a DPS, but with Protection Paladin, I'd say actually it works, it's still really good. But that's just because you have so many ut more utility spells than a Blood Dead Knight or a Vengeance Demon, which is just essentially a plain old tank. Like you can um, speed people, you can heal people, you can shield people, or well, you can remove roots, which just speed up. That's what I mean. As you can see here, it's still actually kind of alright. Well. The shaman actually line of sight the mage. That's kind of their fault, but you can still. You should, I feel like after they nerfed the blood that night healing a little bit and they increased the cost of that strike, so you can cast less. I feel like they that night doesn't heal that much anymore. Anymore, remind me. I'm talking about two versus ones. It's like it doesn't heal that much anymore. That it's like OP to two versus one. But Paladin actually feels untouched in terms of self healing from the last time I made a video. So that actually still feels kind of. Like you still, f you feel overall more powerful than the blood than that, at least in my opinion. And here again, you're gonna see the utility that a Paladin brings. As you can see, I shielded the mage, so they just stopped attacking him, and we could just free damage them. So I focus the war the the warrior now, because I know that that one is super squishy and easy to kill. Oh, well, super squishy! It's squishy, squishy than the monk. And they, they, uh, the monk managed to kill the mage, and here we go into the stupid chase the monk.
So yeah, I was like, yeah, fuck it. You fight me or you're just gonna stand in the middle. I'm not gonna chase you anymore. <laughs> So here we're fighting to the death. And I actually didn't fuck up on the touch of karma, so I'm proud of myself. It's like I misused the cooldown, but at least I didn't start full on attacking it. And here we just fight to the death. It's like that person's probably also tired of running away. It's always the monks that run away, so much is so annoying. So this is going to be the end of the gameplay. So here we go into the gameplay, as you can see here, if you look at the top right of my screen, you see a buff there, which is double barrel, which is the talent that I use, the PvP talent. What you can do, is you can activate it before you start fighting, and then you will uh, have the effect, the spell will go on cooldown, and it will be reset, um, like when you start fighting. So essentially you get like one double barrel for free, instead of casting it when you start fighting. And that's something that I really felt like helps me later on in the video, where I just like can like CC train people so much that they like have to like deal with me first or get away from me first because I throw out so much CC at once. But uh, this fight is just gonna be a really boring slugfest because my priest does no dam or uh, my warlock does no damage, and yeah, it's like we don't CC properly and everything. But just wanted to say that double barrel start that you can like. Load it, front load it up so that you can uh, use it twice in quick succession at the start. to get closer. So as you can see here, I'm going full on Warlock first because I know that when it comes to survivability out of these two classes, I rate the warlock survivability lower than the than the monk survivability because I know what's gonna happen if you um, attack the monk first. Then the monk is just gonna like touch of karma, soak up a lot of damage, and it's gonna run. And if you get him low, he's gonna, he's gonna run away and just start healing like crazy, like as in like the last uh, few times you see me play tank against monk that they just start running away from me. And yeah, I noticed that he's uh, he's a touch of karma. I want to um, paralyze him, but I can't. Now I can paralyze him, give the mage some time to run, but the mage decides to cancel it. I want to heal him, but the mage cancelled it. Mage ice blocks, yeah, and then we just, he just leaves now. But yeah, it's like, as you can see here, it's like what a tank, what uh, you need, is that you need a good DPS with you, because you do a shitload of damage yourself, That's don't get me wrong. It's like, Brewmaster uh, Monk feels the tank that is the least affected by balance changes. It's like, I feel like I'm doing about the same damage I was doing before and you will notice that as well in these videos that I, I'm a lot more successful with monk and that's why I also have more videos because I just am more successful it's more fun to play because where other tanks got hit on mobility like for example the the paladin and the vengeance demon hunter 
It's like you don't get hit on mob you didn't get hit on mobility as a brewmaster monk because your mobility is like the core of your class. This is the rolls. It's like that is literally the core of your mobility. So you're chasing down the priest. I just need to get one of them down because I, I'm quite sure that I can kill the other one afterwards. So uh, yeah, we managed to kill the priest and then I just cleaning up the mage. And the mage actually, I don't know, disconnects or leaves whatever. But uh, here we end up finishing the, the mage and uh, yeah, that's about it. So here we go for the shame first. It's like you still do a lot of damage, but you need fall like the other uh, character to damage with you. Unfortunately, it's like you instantly notice when you have a bad character, and that's what you really notice in three versus three. When you have someone with you who's bad at DPS, then you notice it instantly because you can't kill anything. Because with a healer there, you don't have the damage to kill someone one versus one, like one on on them. So you really need someone with good DPS as well to. Play in 3 vs 3. Obviously in 2 vs 2, you're pretty much cool with most classes. Preferably a class that can survive. Uh, because you don't have like what the Balan has, the shielding. So you need someone who can survive as well. But uh, yeah, in 3 vs 3, you really need someone with you that can actually survive. Like uh, can actually DPS properly. Because you don't need that much survivability. You need someone with medium survivability. And like high damage, you always need high damage because you can't go with like a medium damage dealer because with more utility because you need that damage because you are the utility already. So here we go for the lead, for the squishiest one which is the warrior. Like warriors are fairly squishy so just nuke the warrior down and then it's just clean up time on the warlock. And as you can see it's like when you have like a nice high burst class like with you like a shaman. It's like it's so nice to play. So as you can see here, it's another warrior plus cast a combination like the say like the previous match, and here we just full on nuke the the warrior again, and then just cle it's cle essentially clean up on the mage. Funnily enough, another warrior plus cast a combo. As you can see in every arena that I join, you see the double barrel icon top right, I always use it so that I can get that double stun off. Well double, you can get like two stuns in quick succession. Which is like more than anything just an annoys the hell out of people. And keeps them locked down for even like the slightest amount. It's like you obviously have diminishing returns but who cares about diminishing returns at the start. It's like you just want to force their cooldowns. There we go and now it's just clean up on the warrior. But this warrior is actually pretty damn tanky. But then again, we also popped all our coolants on the on the shaman.
So here we go for the shaman. Instead of the demon hunter. It's like I feel like in like judging from other demon hunters match I've played, we should have gone for the demon hunter first. But the shaman was really good at running away. And I was like at first I was like, hey, thanks are nerfed now, so I'm probably gonna lose. But as you will see from this fight, the amount of self healing that a monk still does is obscene. It's like they didn't change a bit about it. It's like it's still the same amount of ridiculousness, ridiculous high healing. In fact, they actually made it better. It's like the seven, seven spell, like that you soak in the orbs, that has become better because you just soak up everything, every, every orb, not just the ones that are close, everything. So, as you can see here, I actually managed to kill the, the shaman because. And that's just because of the mobility. It's like what I feel like about Monk is that they still have everything that made Monk that made the tank really OP. They have the mobility, they have the damage, and they have the self healing still. It's like I feel like they need to tune Brewmaster Monk a little bit more because, as you can see here, it's like in my opinion now the best tank in PvP in the arena at least. So yeah, I start mind gaming the demon hunter. I'm like, okay, so you want to, want to heal up or something? Well, I'm gonna rest the person then, <laughs> and then I just finish the demon hunter off here. Again, as you can see here, I focus the warrior first. It's like uh, you can. I know that warlocks have quite high su survivability, so I just go full on warrior here. That's warrior dead now, just cleaning up again. But as you can see, it's like I use paralyze as well to keep people in place and just to generally interrupt spells. So here I'm feeling the focus and I can't, I don't really feel comfortable with it. So what I do here is that I line of sight the mage. So that their mage is running after me whilst being damaged by by my mage. So you can see here, they have taken a shitload of damage. My mage is untouched because they focus me so hard. And then I line of sight the mage, which made her run after me and that whilst being damaged by the, by the mage. And here I was rolling away because I didn't want to get hit by the remorseless winter. And we all, I almost have a dead knight dead here, so... That's a GG again.
So this is the first of three duels against these same two people. It was funny, it's like pre-mate against pre-mate. So as you can see here, I'm paralyzing the demon hunter because our focus target is the warlock. Then I use my guard to shield the mage as well, so he takes less damage. Switch a little bit to the demon hunter there. And here I notice that like, shit, the warlock takes no damage, like doesn't die fast enough, so I go on the demon hunter instead, changing my plan. So I chase down the demon hunter. Demon hunter decides to go for me instead. Roll away from the demon hunter. And now I'm like, fuck, I need to kill one of them quickly or I'm gonna lose this. Fortunately, Brewmaster Monk has seen much of self healing. So yeah, I get fortunately feared out of the eye beam. As you can see, yeah, the, the main ability that's keeping me alive is just my 7 ability, just like soaking up those orbs. And I also have the talent where if I am below a certain amount of percent of HP, those have a lot more chance to spawn. And that's like a vital requirement. Yeah, I managed to kill the, the demon hunter, and now it's just a slugfest with the warlock. It's like the warlock has no chance because... Contrary to other, to like for example like the dead knight, I, do, I still do the, amount, the same amount of damage and I don't sacrifice my health for the damage. And... I still have the mobility if they decide to run away from me all the time. Which like other tanks miss, miss on that point. So as you can see here we have changed tactic. I waited out the eye of Leotras. And now it's just uh, nuking down the, de the demon hunter. I think this demon hunter is missing something though because this demon hunter was not like... Like that's why I switched to the demon hunter because I noticed that this demon hunter wasn't as self-healing as other demon hunters. Because I've seen um, uh, certain demon hunters which like completely healed through everything. But that's Probably because this Dead Knight doesn't have the Dead Knight Demon Hunter doesn't have the um, when you are in Metamorphosis form you gain 100% leech because I think that's what keeps Demon Hunters alive and this one doesn't have that so that's why we focus him instead. It's like if he had that this fight would have been these fights would have been a lot harder because we were for, we would be forced to focus the the warlock until his demon for Metamorphosis is gone. This actually seems to be the last one because I don't have another recorded. Oh, well, we fought another one against these two people and we won again. We just nuked the, the, the demon hunter died in like two seconds of that one. So yeah, that's the end of the gameplay.